Okay, for this one, we're going to be looking at this interactive notebook page on symbiosis. We are going to cut each side out around the large boxes. So let's start by doing that. Oh, and don't forget, as we've already talked about, cut the title out unless you want to write it. You could use colored pencils or markers if you want to write it and make it look pretty. But we can just use a title that's already printed for us. So we need some glue. Use a glue stick. Try not to make too much of a mess with your glue stick. All right, put the title on the top of the cardstock. Actually, you know what? This is going to be sideways. So let's put the paper sideways. So like that. Okay, so let's now go ahead and cut the example boxes out. So the whole rectangle with all three examples pages. We're going to cut that one out first because we're going to glue it down on the page first. our iPads to go back and fill in examples of each of these different types of symbiosis. All right, so let's go ahead then and cut out the other rectangle with our three different types of symbiosis. We've got mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Okay, so we're going to fold along the dotted line at the top. And we're going to put glue along that skinny little edge right there so that we can glue it down above our examples. So you're going to glue it right here. So you're going to line it up with the very top edge of your examples and then it's going to fold down over top so that you can see the bottoms right here. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do then is we are going to define each of our words here. Mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. So take a pen or pencil and write the definition. So mutualism is a relationship where two or more organisms are both benefiting. So they're both happy. All right, they're both making out in this relationship. All right, commensalism is going to be a relationship between two or more organisms where one organism is benefiting And the other is unaffected. And then finally, parasitism, which is a relationship between two organisms. Where one organism benefits and the other is harmed. Remember the parasite is the one that harms and the host 
is the one that is harmed. Now, we're going to open this up, and on the inside, up at the top for each of these, we are going to draw the little pictures that I drew for you on the board. So let's get a blue, and let's make a blue smiley face. Actually, we're going to make two blue smiley faces on this one. Remember, this one's our mutualism. There's my black. There it is. So these guys are both happy. So we're going to put smiley faces on both of these guys. All right. So that's mutualism. Commensalism, we're going to do one blue smiley face and one green smiley face. The green guy is going to be unaffected. The blue guy is going to be our happy guy again. So here's my black. I'll put little smiley faces on this blue guy. And I'm going to put a straight line for this guy. He's unaffected, all right? And then for parasitism, for the parasite, and I'm actually gonna label this guy. So he's the happy guy. He's our parasite. He's fat and happy. And then I'm gonna use red to show our host. He's not happy. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop taking advantage of me. That's what he's saying. And he's going to have a sad face. And I'll label him as our host. He's being taken advantage of. All right. So we're going to put some examples down. Now, the book did give us a few different examples, especially for mutualism. So the first example that the book gave us for mutualism was uh, algae and coral, how algae has a home living on the coral, and the coral uses waste products from the algae as its food. So an example would be coral and algae. Another example that the book gives us, remember, uh, we talked about coevolution, and coevolution happens when you have mutual relationships and they evolve together over thousands of years. So they gave us some examples of those types of mutual relationships, like the acacia tree and the ant. So that's another one, acacia tree and ants. Another one that they gave us was the honeybee and flowers. We'll come back to that once we get our iPads out. So let's think about commensalism. The book gave us uh, one example of commensalism, and that was uh, a little tiny fish called a remora that hitches a ride on the shark. And basically, they're pretty lazy. They hitch a ride. The shark swims around the ocean, and the remora is just going wherever the shark goes. The other thing is that when a shark eats, they're pretty messy. And so the remora then uh, can clean up some of the bits of food that the shark is going to leave behind. So they unhitch, they eat the stuff that the shark has left behind, and they hitch back on and catch a ride. So a shark and a remora is one example. And we'll come back to that once we get our iPads out. Uh, the book gave us an example of parasite and host. Uh, they talked about, uh, I think they gave us two examples. They talked about the tomato hornworm and how a wasp will lay its eggs on the back of the hornworm. And as the larvae develops, it then eats away at the hornworm a little bit at a time. And by the time the wasp is ready to hatch, they actually have killed the hornworm. Now, it's not always a good idea for a parasite to kill its host because, you know, if a parasite kills its host, it would have to find another host or it will die as well. So that would be a little counterproductive. So most times it's not going to kill its host. But in this case, the wasp eggs no longer need the uh, 
a hornworm because they're going to hatch and become a wasp. So they kind of change into something different and are no longer a parasite. The other example was a tick biting a dog. Um, remember that ticks can bite pretty much anything, but tick and a dog or a tick and a human or a tick and a deer, anything. Ticks are, are always the parasite there and a dog or the human or the deer would be the host. Um, same thing with a mosquito and a human or any other animal. Uh, we talked in class about tapeworms. So tapeworm and any animals that it might infect. All right, so let's get our iPad out and see if we can find another at least one more example of each of these. So let's type in examples of mutualism. And the first example that comes up yeah, here's here it is again. Um, the clownfish with an anemone. If you've ever seen Finding Nemo, you know that Nemo lives in an anemone, although he can't say it very well, can he? All right, let's try to find another example of commensalism, because remember, the book didn't give us very many. It only gave us one. All right, um, orchids that grow on trees. So a tree and an orchid. So basically, the orchid is using the tree and it's benefiting, but the tree isn't harmed, so it's okay. See if we can find another one. Barnacles and whales. Barnacles live on the whale. Whale is unaffected. It's a bit like the shark in the remora. All right, let's see if we can find one more example of parasitism, although we already have talked about quite a few. Um, parasites are way more exciting to talk about than things that don't get hurt, right? Although here's quite a few. Oh, ringworms. Ringworm. Humans. So ringworm is the parasite. I think we might have talked about that in class too, but that's okay. And the humans that it would infect. Now, that's a pretty nice complete list of examples. Here's our mutualism, both happy, commensalism, one happy, one unaffected, and parasite or parasitism. We've got one that's happy and one that is not happy at all. Please make sure that you have your name and the period that you have me for class. If you want to hole punch it, you can along the bottom edge probably, or I guess it's the top edge if you want, um, and then put it in the homework bin on my desk so I can grade it and uh, get it back to you so that you can put it in your binders.